Welcome to lesson 16 of my Erlang tutorial. In this case, in this lesson, I will be talking about if expression. So, if expression is second conditional primitive, I will talk about the first one was case um, described uh, during last lesson, and today we will talk about if expression. So, you want to make the decision based on some input parameters, then you are using if. Um, okay, so it looks like this. You have if, and then it ends with and. Potentially, it's the, also the end of the complete expression. So I'll put the dot here. It could also go without dot. Um, and with inside if uh, there are guards, and uh, this uh, if the guard if this test is true, then the expression. Uh, there will be, for example, first expression to evaluate. If you have else if, if you want to have uh, else if, you can se write second guard here. I'm put, putting semicolon, um, and then you can have a couple of others. And if you want to write else, you would probably want to write something like this. And this expression will be executed. The true a true expression will be executed uh, as an else. And so in the traditional imperative programming language, you have if else if, and then the else to let's say uh, handle all other issues, all other cases. So in this case, uh, this is how it looks like. So sometimes you do not put this true. For example, you could write something like if and then some guard and then uh, some here some code and here you can write end and this is could uh, you could think about like the normal if from the, no, the imperative programming language but the very important thing in case we we go here Okay, here we have the true, right? True uh, uh, guard. But in this case, since we didn't put the true guard, here the error will be thrown. And uh, because we we didn't handle the situation. In some cases, you want to throw the error. Uh, in some, uh, you don't want, then you are adding the true. Let's write now some code. I will write simple module. Called, called temperature. Uh, okay, so it's written already. I will did it and write it from scratch. Uh, okay. So we have module, temperature, and we have some function which will be exported from this module. I will call it check temperature. It will take one argument. And this check temperature will basically uh, have the if conditional primitive. And if the input temperature is um, smaller than 40, we will say something like, we'll output something like, this temperature is nice. It's probably hot. It's summer, and if it's above 40, it means it's getting too warm for us. So let's let's try it's such a simple example. So I have check check temperature temperature as an argument, and here I will write if, and here I will write and already. And uh, here we want to write something like first guard temperature is smaller than 40. Then what I want to do, I want to write 
format. I want to output something like temperature is okay. If temperature is above 40, is above 40, I want to write something like it's getting hot. Um, and the new line. The, here I don't need to put semicolon since this is the last uh, guard. And the expression in this uh, in this if uh, expression. So let's. I intentionally didn't uh, handle the exact 40, just to show you how how what will be the behavior in case we don't handle this uh, uh, this uh, uh, condition. I will save it, and now I will run Erlang shell. I will compile. my module okay it's fine and now i can call a function check temperature from the module temperature let's pass 10 okay temperature is okay it's below 40. now let's let's pass for example 41. Uh, it's getting hot and now let's pass 40 to show to demonstrate the error which will be thrown. Okay, so we have the exception error, no, no true branch found when evaluating an if expression. So there was no, basically in saying in this imperative language um, terminology, there is no else. Erlang couldn't find the, bran find the branch which will be evaluated to true, therefore it throws the error. We could handle it using the error handling, uh, or we could basically uh, write a true. So here we, we, we uh, true branch. So let me let me do it, and I will here put something like this. And such true looks like this true. I O four format any other case uh, so of course here i could also compare temperature to 40 uh, to ensure that i'm covering full range of values for temperature but I, I want to show you how to write such else statement uh, else expression using this true guard so i'm particularly true so it will always f fall back in case this. Uh, so so when when Erlang is evaluating this if expression, it goes to first guard. In case it's true, it will execute uh, this uh, expression and it will leave. It would leave this uh, expression uh, if expression. In case if it's not true, it goes to the second guard. In case it's true, it will be uh, evaluated. If case it's not, it goes to the next, and so on and so on. So uh, as a last, it checks if there is a true guard. Uh, if not, then it will just throw the error that there is no true branch, which can cover else uh, else uh, situation. And if it's if there is a true, then we want to it, then it will be executed. So in this case, it will just Right. any other case. Let me save it and try to compile it. Okay, maybe I'll clear my screen. See it. Temperature. Temperature, check temperature. And again, for example, 39. Temperature is okay, so the first guard was true. 41. It's getting hot, so the second guard was true. Now I want to show demonstrate the 
TrueGuard, so 40, and the other case. So this is exactly how we are writing the if expression. Um, so thanks for listening and stay tuned for other video. Cheers and bye bye.